Good morning and welcome to Monday at our 9 at 9. We are grateful you are joining us here today. This is the Monday after we talked about the passage in John 19 where Jesus cries out, I am, I am thirsty, I thirst. Um, we are going through a series of sermons on the seven last words of, of Christ on the cross. And uh, it's been uh, kind of significant the way that these expressions of Jesus, of despair, of uh, confidence and hope uh, have been really important to us as we have walked through this time of not only the tornado, uh, but dealing with COVID-19. Uh, I hope you and your family are, are doing well. And, and I want to focus on, uh, on the cheap wine part of this passage. Uh, Jesus realizes the end is coming near. He calls out that he's thirsty, and the soldiers are standing around. Now remember, we always think Jesus was real high, like on a telephone pole. He wasn't. It was a, it was a, a chopped tree, and if you've been to the Middle East, trees don't grow real high there, so he would have been either eye level or just above eye level uh, to the soldiers who were overseeing his execution. And the soldiers heard that, and one of them uh, reached in and, and stuck a sponge into the cheap wine that they were drinking. Now, there are different kind of uh, interpretations here. There's vinegar, there's um, a sour wine. Uh, everybody in, in the uh, Israel in that time, uh, around Jerusalem, everybody drank wine. It was the common drink of the day. Uh, now, what the soldiers were drinking was the cheapest of the cheap. It was the everyday stuff that you would grab just to kind of get you through the day. Uh, so you can imagine it was bitter, it was rank. It was just for, for killing your thirst to, to allow you to stay in your work. And that's what they gave, gave Jesus. They soaked that sponge up and they pressed it up to his mouth and squeezed, and squeezed it into, into his mouth. And Jesus refused it. Now, uh, there's all kind of interpretations uh, about this. There's all kind of reasons that... Um, a lot of people say that Jesus didn't want to be uh, anesthetized in any way, uh, that he didn't want anything to take the pain away of what he was enduring, that he wanted to be able to experience the full weight of sin, the full agony of his suffering, so that he would then be able to offer us a full pardon. Uh, that's part of it. My kind of take on this is a little more simple. I, I think when Jesus says that he is thirsty, he is talking about something else. John gives us a clue. John says, Jesus knows things are about to end. They're coming to a close. Jesus is so close now to fulfilling his mission for the Father. He's in that moment of an agonizingly long run where he can see the finish line. All it takes is one more kick and he'll be home. Everything about him is screaming. His hands are screaming. His arms are screaming. His legs are screaming. His lungs are smothering. And he's thirsty. He wants to be finished. He wants to be home. He wants this to be done. And they give him cheap wine. He spits it out. Why? That's not what he's thirsty for. You've done it. Uh, you have stood in front of the refrigerator dying of thirst and you have sampled everything in the refrigerator to find what you were thirsty for. Uh, you have taken a soda and you have taken a sip of it. No, that's not what you're wanting because you know, soda has salt in it. So it doesn't quench your thirst. It just makes you more thirsty. Uh, maybe there's some kind of juice or if you're hot and sweaty and you take milk, ugh, nothing's worse. And finally you decide what you're really thirsty for is water. That's what quenches your thirst. That's what I think was going on with Jesus. I think he was so close to being done. He was thirsty for it to be over. He wanted to be back with the Father. He wanted it to be finished. And now he's so close. And all of the cheap stuff the world offers us just won't quench your thirst. You know that, don't you? How many cheap things have you tried to substitute for the living water of Jesus Christ? 
How many times have you thought to yourself, my life is missing something. My life needs something. And like somebody standing in front of a refrigerator, you've opened the cabinet of the world and going, well, I'll try this, I'll try this, I'll try this, and nothing works. Jesus stood up one day in the middle of a crowd and said, everyone who is thirsty, come, and I'll give you living water. To us, Jesus says that same thing. If you are thirsty for God to be finished in you, for God to be complete in your family, then there's only one thing that will end that thirst, that will quench that thirst, and that's Jesus Christ himself. Everything else is a poor substitute. So we're going to close our time together with another 60 seconds. Use this time to focus on those things that you have tried to quench your thirst with, and then focus on the only thing that does, Jesus Christ. We'll see you next time.